Hi, I'm David Pedowitz. I'm an orthopedic surgeon at the Rothman Institute in Philadelphia, and I'm here to present to you today a difficult case of a posterior talus fracture. So by history, this is a 42-year-old male who was in a motor vehicle collision head-on. He was wearing a seatbelt. The airbags were deployed. And it's sort of an unclear mechanism of a left ankle injury. Um, there were no open wounds on exam. He had moderate ecchymosis of his ankle, but also, interestingly enough, of his foot, too. Initial x-rays revealed a zone 2, but slightly comminuted fifth metatarsal fracture, as well as something looking a little abnormal in the posterior talus. You can see right under the medial malleolus and then just behind um, the, uh, the talus on the lateral x-ray. Just something isn't right. So what we did was we got a CT scan, and as you can see from the CT scan, um, obviously on the sagittal image you can see that there is a fracture of the base of the fifth metatarsal, but most importantly there is a displaced intraarticular fracture of the posterior medial talus. And I thought that at the time that this was displaced enough and it had enough of an intraarticular involvement that it did necessitate open reduction internal fixation. My concern initially was also that, hey, this is right adjacent to all the structures that we really don't want to operate it uh, through, meaning the neurovascular bundle, the tendons, et cetera. Um, but for this patient, we had to make a plan and sort of go through with it. And I'll show you what we did. So the surgical plan was to fix the talus through a posterior approach, and then also plate the fifth metatarsal. Now I chose to plate the fifth metatarsal um, because I was concerned that a screw might blow apart those other fracture lines, and then I would be stuck with a even more comminuted fracture that might have more difficulty healing. Um, and so I felt that a plate was probably going to be the best construct for this patient. We did the surgery through a posterior approach. It was essentially taking the flexor hallucis longus um, and just protecting the entire neurovascular bundle with it. Um, this was a very nice approach for us that allowed us to really see the posterior uh, medial talus really nicely without really risking uh, injury to the neurovascular structures. As you can see in that picture, the posterior talus fragment has been nicely reduced, provisionally fixed with some K-wires after it had been cleaned out. We elected to fix this with 3.5 fully threaded headless compression screws. Um, I chose these because they're nicely countersunk, they get great purchase, um, and they're not too big. And you can see we got a really nice reduction there. I think when the patient is in maximal plantar flexion, these will be countersunk enough that they won't cause any impingement, um, but will still benefit from the strength of a fairly rigid intraarticular reduction. Final x-rays here reveal that there's two screws in the posterior talus from posterior to anterior. And then you can see that fifth metatarsal plate um, really just nicely reducing that fracture, holding it in good position for eventual healing. This patient was made non-weight-bearing for six weeks, then weight-bearing is tolerated in a boot and started physical therapy at six weeks, but I protected him until about 10 weeks, um, just because he had these two injuries and the talus is such a fragile bone.